What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do some speed reviews. I have quite a few products sitting in front of me so I'm not going to stay on this intro very very long because we need to jump into this. We've got some things to talk about. We've got some really good products. We've got a couple of misses but let's do this. But before we begin I do want to let you know that every product that we talk about will be linked and listed down in the description box as well as what I am wearing on my face. I did film this look. You will see it very short shortly coming up in a video, a new one that I'm doing. It's a four looks with four indie palettes video and I'm excited about it. But let's go ahead and hop into these speed reviews. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. This is not a ranking. I'm gonna kind of clump everything together by category the best I can, but it's not a ranking. We're just kind of going in order of application. For me, that's what works the best. And we're gonna start right here with the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Radiance Booster. Now, I have the shade 9.5, and I like this. I really do enjoy it. Um, it does have a nice doe foot applicator to it. For me, it's not the glowiest thing in the world. It just adds like a nice lit from within glow. I think this looks beautiful as a foundation versus a glow booster. I also think it looks really pretty as a um, highlighter as well. This comes in a slew of different shades. The price point is there. It's inexpensive. It's more on the affordable side. It's a drugstore brand. We love that. I was not a big fan of this as a mix in with my foundations. I did mix it in with one of them and it kind of... I don't want to say it altered the consistency of it, but I don't think it meshed very well. So for me personally, I like this either on its own or as a liquid highlighter, but this is beautiful. I am enjoying it, but if you're looking for something that's going to give you something you can mix in with a matte foundation, I don't think this is going to be your girl. I don't know. It could just be my, my skin, but for me personally, it didn't really work that way. The Cover FX Radiant Start Tinted Moisturizer. Now, I did do a dedicated review and wear test on this. I have the shade number one, and this is beautiful, but this is extremely glowy. If you watched that, this is in no way, shape, or form for anybody that has combination or oily skin. This is for normal to dry skin. It almost looks like a glow booster when you're putting it on. I've tried using it that way. It does not work that way. It is definitely a foundation. I do enjoy it. It's not my favorite. It did hold up for the 12 hours. It looked beautiful, but it is, like I said, very, very glowy. I think this is going to be great for me in the winter. I don't know about the summer just because it does get really hot and humid down here in Houston, Texas, and I have a feeling it would kind of melt off but it's beautiful. I do really enjoy it. I like it. I highly recommend it if you have dry skin. Like if you have really dry skin, I think you would enjoy this. Up next is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydro Glow. Now I got one of the little mini sizes because they had it in my shade. I am the shade 1R02 and this is beautiful. I really enjoyed this. It's hydrating. It adds a little bit of glow to the skin. It's got a good medium coverage. It held up really well. It looked beautiful on my skin. I'm impressed with this one. This is the first Makeup Forever um, like foundation I've ever used and I really enjoy it. This one out of the three kind of complexion foundation products that I've tried is my favorite. I would probably repurchase this in a full size when I run out because I really like this one. Okay, we're gonna pop over to concealer. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is from Ritual Defeat, and this is actually a lab access release. I do believe that you can still get on there and purchase it, but you have to go in, scan the QR code, give your feedback, because they're still working on this. So this is not the final product, this is not the final component. This is just something they're doing to kind of get people involved, see what they think of the formula, get their feedback. And I tested it, and I really enjoyed this. It's a little on the thicker side, 
but it doesn't sit heavy under the eyes. Honestly, if they were to come out with it just like this, I would be happy with the formula. The shade match is really good. It is a little light for my under eyes. It's a little too brightening, but if I go in with a setting powder that has just a little bit of color to it, I can kind of mute that out and put it back with like my skin tone. I'm not a big fan of the super bright under eyes. I like something that kind of meshes with my skin, but this is a good formula. It does say that it is the ultra high coverage plush wear concealer. I don't really agree with that because I did try covering up my tattoo with this and you could still see it. So it is a full coverage foundation, but it's not like the fullest of full coverage foundations. It's more or concealers. It's more on the low end of, um, concealers but this is a beautiful product um i'm excited to see what they do with the final product and what it's like i will definitely test that out but like i said if they were to release this today as is i would be very happy with it i do like it i don't think that it would be an absolute favorite for me just because i don't prefer a full coverage foundation i like or concealer i keep saying foundation I've got foundation on the brain Concealer, I prefer more of a light medium coverage concealer. Let's talk about the Cover FX Skin Discovered Long Wear Concealer. I have the shade F1. This is gorgeous. This blew me away. I tested this one when I tested this foundation. This is gorgeous. This is a high medium coverage teetering on full coverage concealer and it does not crease. It does not settle. It sets down on its own. I did not need a powder to set this concealer. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way it looks under my eyes. I love the way that it wears. It's not heavy. It's not the most hydrating concealer. I will say that, but it's also not super drying. I have other ones that I've tried that are really drying. They're not very flattering under the eyes, but this one is gorgeous. If you're looking for a good concealer that you don't have to use powder with, this is a nice one. I highly recommend it. I was blown away by this one because I haven't tried anything from Cover FX in years. And based off of this, I'm curious about what else they have to offer. All right, let's talk about the Cali Ray Hideaway Brightening Plus Hydrating Under Eye Serum Concealer. I have the shade Dawn. This, I'm in love. This has become a quick favorite. I absolutely adore this. Now, if you look at the shade swatches on Sephora, this looked very pink. This looked like a pink that you would find in a pastel palette, and it is not. It is not quite that pink. It does have a nice doe foot applicator, but this, this is so pretty under the eyes. One, it's very thin, it's very hydrating, but it's very cooling when you put it on, which I found to be really neat. I didn't put it in the refrigerator or anything like that beforehand, but you put it on and you can feel it just kind of depuffing under your eyes. It covers any darkness and conceals everything under there. It's more of a light coverage concealer, but this is beautiful. I've really been enjoying it. It is the concealer that I'm wearing today, and I have not been wanting to put this one down. This is one that I would absolutely 100% repurchase. All right, let's pop over to bronzers. I have a little stack right here, but let's go ahead and start with the Glossier Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color. This is in the shade Sale, so they recently came out with... Um, a bronzer line of their cloud paints and when I first tried this I was like it's really light I don't know how I feel about it I need to get the other shade I did end up swatching that one in store I went to a Sephora where they carry these and it was it was a little too orange for me so I went home tested this out again and I really like this it is a beautiful color on me it's a very subtle um, bronzer so it's gonna go perfect on like those no makeup makeup days where I'm wearing a very light coverage like a skin tint and maybe I'm not putting on a powder I just want to add a little bit of color to the skin the formula is beautiful it is the same cloud paint formula so if you've used that formula before and you know it you love it you will absolutely love this it's beautiful the shade isn't my absolute favorite I would love it if they would come out with more shades in this because like I said this one's just a little too light for me I can't can get away with it I can use it but I've also used quite a bit of this trying to make it work for me so I'm hoping they come out with more shades if they do I would love to pick up one of those because the next shade up like I said is a little too orangey for my skin tone 
Let's talk about this one from Jasmine Beauty. Now, this is the one that I got in my March Ipsy box or Ipsy boxy charm. And if you watch that video, this this was a disaster. This was so patchy on the skin it looked terrible and it just did not do it for me but i will say i have played with it before and you can make it look absolutely beautiful you can get it to work it just takes a lot of elbow grease and you have to make sure that your skin is like overly powdered like it there is not one little bit of anything peeking through as far as product but the shade is also not a great shade match for me either. It is a little bit on the warm side. It's not horrible. I can get away with it. It's just one of those I'm not going to reach for because it's too much work. It's too much finessing. The shade isn't perfect. It's just, it's a lot of work to make it work for me. So this one would be a pass for me, unfortunately. I am glad I got to try it out because I love trying new brands, but this one just didn't meet the mark. Okay, up next, let's talk about the Makeup Forever Artist Bronzer. I have the shade Wild Sand, and this, this is a gorgeous bronzer. If you've been checking my description boxes, you will know that I used this one like crazy. The shade is perfect for my skin. It blends out beautifully. I don't have any patching, any grabbing. Even if my skin isn't 100% um, powdered, it looks beautiful. I really enjoy this. I love the undertone of this one. This is a fantastic formula, and I'm excited about this one. It is a matte bronzer, but it still looks beautiful on the skin. It doesn't look drying. It doesn't look like a flat matte. It doesn't have a luminosity to it, but you know what I mean when sometimes you get a matte bronzer, and it's just a little bit on like that powdery side where it just excites accentuates texture and like dryness and all that this doesn't do it it kind of melts in with the skin it's a beautiful bronzer i absolutely adore this one and then i also have the new ysl all hours hyper bronzer now i will never remember the shade name of this because it's not on it but it is the second to lightest one i believe that's zero four um but i'm not sure what the actual shade name is but this one Okay, when I first tried this one, it was like pigmented and it is a very pigmented bronzer. So if you're used to luxury beauty where it's not on the most pigmented side, it's very buildable, very sheer, this is not that. You have to go in with a very light hand. I am wearing this one today and I do like the way that it looks on my skin. The more I've used it, the more I've loved it. I don't know if it's an absolute favorite of mine, but as far as a luxury bronzer goes, this is beautiful and it's cheaper than like the Gucci, the Tom Ford, all of that. It's beautiful. I love, love, love the formula of this. I wish the shade range was a little bit better. That's one thing I also noticed with Luxury Beauty is that their shade ranges are not always the best because there is one that's lighter than this. And looking at the pictures, it looked like it would have been too light for me. It may not have been, but it also looked a little yellowy. But like I said, I did order this online. So I kind of like rolled the dice, shoot my shot, gave it a chance and this is what I got but I do really enjoy it I love it it is beautiful a little bit goes a long way I don't know if I love it as much as the makeup forever though I will tell you that but it's a beautiful one it's a good one if you're looking for a luxury bronzer to have in your collection I do really enjoy this one Okay, let's talk blush because I've got a lot of blush sitting in front of me. Let's start out with these liquid blushes right here from Glaminatrix Cosmetics. So Glaminatrix Cosmetics is an Australian indie brand and they came out with these with their most recent eyeshadow palette launch, which was the Pretty in Pastels palette. And these are so beautiful. This formula is stunning. It's not overly pigmented. A little little bit does go a long way. It's buildable. It blends into the skin beautifully. You can use this over or under powder. It has like a nice luminosity to it. It's not a glowy blush. It's not a matte blush. It does dry down. It doesn't stay sticky on the cheek if you put it over powder and it does peek through if you put it under powder as well. But this is a beautiful, beautiful formula. I love the colors that they came out with. I do have a, um, 
short up here on Instagram and a real or a short here up on YouTube and a real over on Instagram swatching and trying all of these on they can also be used on the cheek as, or the lip as well and I like them on the lip they kind of have like a weird like fragrancy taste to them like they're not anything that's like delicious or ha or is like okay usually when products are made for like the cheeks and the lips they kind of have like a weird like smell taste thing going on when you put them on the lips they do look beautiful on the lips i have used them on the lips they're not my favorite in that way but if you're looking for a two-in-one product that you can use these are beautiful they're affordable i really really enjoy this i'm hoping that they expand on this shade range Okay, I have this little duo that I got in my Ipsy Boxy Charm this month. This is from Miss Fame. This is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. And it's this cute little blush duo. So you get a cream and then you get a powder. This powder has some luminosity to it, but this is actually really nice. I have really enjoyed it. I like the shade. I like the formula. I don't have any issues using it over or under powder. I've even used this like the Patrick Ta way and it works. It looks beautiful. So this is a good one. If you got this in your box, pull it out, use it. It's beautiful. Play with it. Um, if you're curious about it and you didn't get it in your box or maybe it's in like the Ipsy shop or you just want to purchase it outright, this is nice. I really enjoy it. The packaging is super cute, super beautiful. I like that we have a mirror in here and I really enjoy this from the brand. I've never heard of them, but this is cute and I like it. All right, so I have one of the Guerlain Terracotta Blushes. This is in the shade Light Coral, and this is pretty. It's not my favorite. I really have to build this up on my cheek. I almost wish I had gotten, like, the regular coral because they had, like, their lights, and then they had... I don't think they were darks. Maybe they were. Maybe they were deeps. I don't know, but they had, like, two shade ranges. So they had a coral in each, a pink in each, you get my drift. This is nice. Like I said, I really have to build it up, but I love a blush moment. I like my blush to show. I like it to see. I like to have that flush of color. If you're looking for a very subtle blush, this is beautiful. It does have a nice sheen to it. It's not a shimmery blush, but it's not a flat matte blush either. It's just a beautiful one. It's not my favorite at all, like I said, because I do really enjoy a blush moment, but I like this a lot better than I like my Chanel blush that I picked up. That that one I feel like I never build up this one I can get there it just takes a little bit it's nice it doesn't make me want to purchase any more of them I don't know if I would recommend it unless you are looking for a subtle blush on the cheek then I would highly recommend it okay I picked up two of the Patrick Ta new blush ranges that he um, that he came out with I picked up just enough and not too much so just enough is this beautiful cool toned baby pink and then not too much is just a beautiful neutral everyday shade i had never tried this duo before i do have a patrick Ta blush in my collection but it's one of the monochrome ones that he doesn't make anymore and i had never tried these but this is a absolutely beautiful formula like i want more of these i want them all if i could go purchase all of them right now i absolutely would these are beautiful i enjoy them on their own i enjoy them together i enjoy them either the patrick ta way or the traditional way where you put on the cream and then put the powder over it these are absolutely beautiful and i love that he put this little plastic flap over it so you can keep them separated I'm impressed with this formula. If you've never tried it before and you're looking for a good cream powder, whatever, these are beautiful from the brand. I'm really, really impressed. Now, I also picked up two of the new House Labs Color Fuse blushes. So this is a re-release from the brand. This is not necessarily a new product. She has had these before. Um, I picked up Watermelon Bliss, which is this red shade right here. This is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I'm kind of getting into red blushes. And then I picked up one of her new shades, which is French Rosette. She did come out with 
two new shades and I only picked up one of them because I felt like this is the one that I would like. Now this is the same formula. It is absolutely beautiful. I do have one of her blushes from her first launch and let me just show you that these are significantly smaller. They are a lot smaller. So the new ones have five grams of product and the old ones have 11 grams of product. So you're getting less than half the product for only a few dollars less. Um, I will put the price point down below, but I think this was like 38 and these are like 32. So as far as cost effectiveness goes, it's not the most cost effective, but I will say that a lot of that cost probably goes into this component because you do have the color on the front now, which is one thing that I really do enjoy. I only have one of her original ones, so for me it's not an issue. I know what color it is, but if I had all of them, it would probably drive me nuts that I have to either look at the sticker on the back or open it up to figure out um, what color it is. But formula wise i love this formula i this is one of my favorite blushes in my collection i really really love this one it's a beautiful shade i wish i had gotten more when they came out but i didn't realize that they were limited edition and i kind of had it in my head oh those are going to be around i'll pick them up later and obviously that was wrong but i'm happy to have these in my collection just be aware that you do get a significantly less amount of product. It is the same formula. So if you already have any of the existing shades in the old compact, you don't need to pick it up. Maybe just pick up one or both of the new shades. I am hoping that she does continue to expand on the color range in this because th these are beautiful. I enjoy these. They're not as overly pigmented as I feel like a lot of people say that they are. If you go in with a light hand, they really work out well. They blend nicely, they build up nicely, they're beautiful. I will say the darker shade, the Watermelon Bliss, is a little bit more on the pigmented side, but red blushes usually are, so that's not a huge deal for me. Okay, let's move over to highlights. I only have a few highlighters that we're gonna talk about. So first, let's talk about this palette. This is the Celestial Lights pal palette that came out with the Wizard Collection from Fantasy Cosmetica. Now, these are beautiful. These are not for the faint of heart. These are very colorful highlighters. So if you're looking for a subtle, like pink or purple or peachy tone, this is not going to be that. These are going to be colors on your cheek, but I will say that these blend in nicely. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of swatching, but these do blend in nicely on my cheek. The purple one, not so much. I can't really get away with the purple one as much as I want to, but I love the formula. These are beautiful. I think that these are gonna work out better as like a lid topper or an inner corner shade. I love to use a highlighter as an inner corner shade, but these two shades I think are beautiful. I love them on my skin tone. I'm sure if you have a deeper skin tone, all of these would work out perfect. It is a good formula. I'm hoping that they make more highlighters in the future that are maybe a little bit more wearable for more people with the same formula because it's beautiful. I love a colored highlighter. I love Fantasy Cosmetica. I think this is an exciting release from the brand. I don't know if it exactly hit the nail on the head, but they're going in the right direction. We'll see what they do with this one. I do like it. It's not a favorite highlighter palette, but it is a good one. And then I also have two of the ColourPop Twilight Collection highlighters. So, well, two of them, the only two that they came out with the collection. So we have Meadow and we have Vampire Skin. So Meadow has a little bit more of like that pink iridescent sheen to it. Beautiful on the skin. And then the Vampire Skin is like a silver shimmery highlighter gonna make you look like Edward Cullen but these are beautiful it is that good super shock um, formula that we all know we love I prefer meadow over vampire skin but these are beautiful I know Colourpop is planning on restocking this entire collection once again I will let you know in the community section when they announced that drop they said sometime this spring and I'm assuming that's probably going to be the last restock so if you haven't gotten your hands on this and you want it I would imagine this restock is probably going to be a little bit easier than the last one or even the first release but these are beautiful I do really enjoy the ColourPop Super Shock 
um, highlighter formula. It's not my favorite, but it is a good one for the price point from the drugstore. For me, I prefer putting these on with a finger versus a sponge or a brush. I just feel like they work better. I can just kind of swirl my finger in, tap and blend, and these are beautiful. Okay, I have one face palette that we're gonna talk about. We're actually getting to the end. It's a lot, but we're speeding through this. So this is the Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. Now, this got a lot of hate from a lot of people, but I kind of took it for what it is, and what it is is just a go-to palette for the person who just wants simple looks. They want simplicity. They're not looking for anything complicated. They want to throw a color on their lid and go. Now, I enjoy this. I really do like it. I like the shades. These, I like to mix all three of them together. That's how I figured out how to use the bronzer the best way for me because whenever I use just this one or just this one, it's a little too on the yellowy side for me, but if I throw this shade in with it, it's beautiful. It looks perfect. It's a good neutral tone for me. Both of these blushes work very well for me as well. This one is not quite as pigmented. You have to build it up a little bit more. This one's beautiful. Swirl them together. They're beautiful as well. Now, the eyeshadows in here, I really like. I did make a look using several of these. I did also do a short swatching all of these on my eyes as well. And for what this palette is, I really enjoy it. I like it. I didn't expect it to be anything, you know, super pigmented that I could do a lot of creative looks with. I knew what I was getting into. My only issue with this is that this is not going to work for every single skin tone. If this works for me, this is not going to work for the girl next door that has a really deep skin tone. It's absolutely not going to. This shade is gonna look so chalky on her. These are gonna do nothing. These aren't even gonna work as eyeshadows for her. So my thing is I wish she had come out with like two or three different palettes for different shade ranges, like a light, a medium, and a deep, or even make it to where you could build one yourself on her website. So you could go in and pick from your different shades, not everything, but just like a good little array and kind of build it yourself. The eyeshadows in here are magnetic. So if you wanna travel with this, you could pop those out, pop in your other Natasha Denona eyeshadow shades that you have, kind of create your own little all-in-one travel face palette. So I like it, I enjoy it. I just really wish that she would have done more. I don't understand when brands release something like this and think it's gonna be good for everybody. It's absolutely not going to. So for me, it kind of knocks it down a little bit. Do I recommend it? Yes. If these shades work for you and this is what you're looking for, I recommend it. Or if you're like a Natasha Denona collector. But if you're somebody who does not like a one swipe and go eyeshadow or very light looks, you can pass on this one. Go for her other palettes. Also, if you are anything more than probably like a light medium skin tone, you can pass on this as well. But for me personally, I do enjoy it. So I recommend it, but I don't recommend it at the same time. I'm kind of like on the fence. Like while I was excited about it, I don't think it's the best release from the brand. I just think she could have done better. All right, I have one brow product to talk about, and this is the Dominique Cosmetics Brow Frame Pencil. I have the shade Cool Deep Brown. This is freaking awesome. I love this. I ordered this as an add-on in my BoxyCharm, and I was curious about it because I remember when this released, and I just thought, oh, that's like really cool, but um, I wasn't really in the market for a brow product. I wasn't when I bought this either, but it was heavily discounted and I wanted to try it. And this is like the coolest product either. So that is what the tip of it looks like. And then down here you have this sharpener that you can use. Let me show you. You kind of grate it along there and sharpen it to a point. You have your spoolie. This is cool. I'm wearing it today in my brows. I have worn this almost non-stop since I got it. I've kind of had to pull myself away and use other things, but once you figure out how to use this, it's amazing. If you pick this up, if you plan on picking it up, if you already have, 
watch her video on her channel. I will link it down below. I know I linked it in the video where I first tried this, but I'll link it down below again. And once you figure it out, this is the coolest thing ever because you can make hair like strokes, you can fill in, you can kind of go in this way. It's a very versatile, very innovative product and I like it. It's one that I will absolutely 100% repurchase when I run out. Okay, lip products. I have a lot of lip products, but for the most point, we're going to talk about them like in clumps. So let's start with the new Huda Beauty Faux Filler Lip Glosses. I like these. I really enjoy these. I don't know if it's my favorite lip gloss formula, but it's definitely up there. It's one of probably my top three or four lip gloss formulas that I have, but I did pick up four colors and these are so beautiful. I really enjoy them. For one, I like that it says faux filler. These are not a plumping lip gloss. They are not. What these are is they are a lip gloss that fills in the lines in your lips and kind of makes them just look very juicy, very healthy, very plump. They're comfortable. They're not sticky. They're not overly pigmented, but they do have some pigmentation to them. I've been using them a lot. These are super comfortable on the lips. They're moisturizing. They last a good time for a gloss. Obviously, they're not going to last all day. They are a gloss, but they're easy to reapply. And the doe foot on these is really cool because it is like the shape of your lips. So let me show you. Can you see? how that's kind of like the shape of your lips. It kind of hugs and contours whenever you put it on. I enjoy these. I think this is a good release from the brand. I'm excited to see what she has in store for the rest of the year now that she is stepped back into the CEO seat and she's taking over. She's talked about revamping, um, kind of re what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, Rebranding the brand, getting rid of a lot of products, cleaning house, and kind of giving it a refresh. So I'm excited to see what she does. And I think this one is a fantastic release from her. Now up next for lips, I have these three from Odin's Eye that came out with the Diversa Series 2 collection. So I did get one from each of the creators. I have two of the Shine. No, these are all Shines. These are all Shine lip glosses and these are beautiful. I already knew that I loved the Odin's Eye formula and I still love these as well. I love the shades that I got. I got Buttercup, Snake Kiss, and Brilliance and these are beautiful. This is another one of those formulas that I absolutely love. I adore. They're so comfortable. They're so beautiful on the lips. I really like the colors that they came out with. They do have a high shine. They're not sticky. They're not heavy. They, um, they last a good little while and I've kind of noticed, I don't know if it's just me, but they kind of leave behind a little bit of that color on your lips. So once it's worn off, you still have a flush of that color. And I think that's really cool, but I love these. I I love the Odin's Eye Gloss Formula. I think a lot of these are still available on the website, but um, these will be linked down below. So if you're curious, if you're interested, if you didn't pick them up, you can hop over there and do that. Okay, last for lips, I have this one from TYS Beauty. This is the Shea Butter Lip Gloss. I can't remember what color I got, but I did get this one in my BoxyCharm, and I like this. I really, really do like this. Now, it has that pink color to it, but it's more like a clear with just like a hint. It's like like clear but better. It's not quite as pink as this one. Like. This one from Huda Beauty has a pink tint when you put it on it. This one is like a clear with just a little bit of like an oomph to it. That's the best way I can describe it is it doesn't really alter any of the lip liners that I put it over. It more so enhances them, but this is comfortable. It's beautiful. I've really been enjoying this. It smells very sweet. Yeah, it smells very sweet. I love it when a lip gloss or even a lip product smells sweet but it's comfortable it's beautiful I like it I don't have any issues with it it doesn't leave like the stringy thing it's not sticky it's not heavy or anything like that I really enjoy this one 
Okay, last two products, we're down to the end, the nitty gritty. I have two setting sprays and I like both of these. I really do, but I like them for different reasons. So let's start with the Patrick Ta She's Thirsty Dewy Milk Mist. This is not for oily skin. It's not for oily skin, it's not for combination skin. I can imagine this really just accentuating your oils and not holding up your makeup. But if you have normal skin or dry skin, this is a beautiful setting spray. It's hydrating, it's going to make your makeup last all day, and it's gonna give you like this beautiful dewy glow. I like to use this one whenever I've put my makeup on and I've noticed I'm looking just a little dry, a little powdery. Maybe I went in with more of a like skin like matte finish foundation or even a matte or I put on a little too much powder and I just want to bring some life back to the skin. This is what I like that one for. I think it's beautiful. It's the finishing spray that I have on today. It does make my makeup last. It keeps me hydrated all day. And I can also reapply it later if I need to. If I'm feeling a little bit more dry, I can do that as well. It also works really good under another setting spray as well. So you can kind of use it in conjunction as both. And it doesn't have a fragrance. <laughs> The Juvia's Place Ready Set Sealed Setting Spray. This does have a fragrance. It's almost like roses or a garden, like very, very floral, but it's not over the top. Once it's on and you're done spraying, you don't smell it anymore. So it's not a spray that lingers. But this one I really like. This is not, to me, it's not a matte setting spray. It's just a natural finish setting spray but it's not sticky, it's not goopy, it makes my makeup last. I like this one if I've gone in and I'm already looking glowy, I'm looking hydrated, I don't need to add any more glow, I don't wanna mattify or anything like that, I just want to set my makeup. This one's beautiful for that one. It also layers well over this one. So I like both of these. I think this is a good release from the brand. I'm excited to have it. I love it when I can find a more affordable product that I really do enjoy and love. Not one that's just good, but one that I love. And this is a good one. I really, really love it. I highly recommend this one if you don't mind a small fragrance in your setting spray. But that is it, y'all. That is all of the products that I have tried recently that I have gotten my final thoughts on, that I know how I feel about them, and I was ready to give you a review. It was a lot. We had a lot of good ones. We had some that were kind of meh on the fence. We had a couple of misses, but that's okay. I'm still excited. I'm happy to welcome all of these into my collection. Now I want to hear from you per usual. Did you pick any of these up? Did this video help you kind of make your final purchasing decision? Um, if there's anything that you know that I've tried recently and you didn't see any here, I'm probably not done testing it. It's coming. I have a basket that has products in it that I'm pulling from, testing out, seeing what I think. I will probably have another speed review at some point, probably towards the end of this month, maybe the beginning of next month. But yeah, let me know all of your thoughts and comments down below. Let's have that conversation. Let's light up that, um, that comment box. But as usual, I want to thank you all so much for watching my video and spending your time with me. It does mean so, so much to me. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up before you leave. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so that you can be notified of all my future posts here on my channel. I do post quite a few videos every week, most days if not every day, and I wouldn't want you to miss one. But until my next video, have a good one. Bye.